never get enough track oh! Oh! My brain hurts. Ooh, sweet mild psychosis. <laughs> What's good? Yo, I'm so glad. Day five, dunk tip, five out of five mindset, baby. Dunk life daily, the DLD. Delirium life daily, baby. Feels like the universe is aligning. Uh, I made these little dunk tips. It's going well. I hope you guys are enjoying. But I need to get back to just spewing nonsense because that's what's like bubbling up the most. This is what I usually, 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 usually use this podcast for. And so uh, mindset is kind of perfect because it's a good transition from straight structure of the dunk tips, dot, dot, blah, blah, program. Speaking of programs, might have a surprise for you. Stay tuned for the end of the podcast. Winky, winky. If you're watching, you don't need me to say that, but if you're, if you're listening, you need a wink. Whew, so mindset, what's up? Mild psychosis, what's up, my psychos? Selly psychos. That's actually a pretty good name for my, for my fans. Selly Psychos. It's a, it's a good thing though. It's like, I'll get into it. So what's going on? We had a good week. T -t episode 32. It's like a friggin' month's worth, even on a leap year, a month worth of the daily dunk life daily. That's a lot already. I can't believe it's been 32 eps, but uh, my hair looks nice right now. Terrible, but um, feeling great. Today's dunk day for me. Mindset is one huge thing that shifted me. Um, that I think is extremely important for everything you do, every time you hit the gym, every time you wake up, every ounce, every second of the day, mindset, everything starts with your mind. And a, a big question I get a ton is how do you stay motivated? How do you have so much goddamn energy? First of all, today I feel amazing. My energy is at the friggin' max. I'm dunking today. I was supposed to go yesterday. I was supposed to hoop and play, but nobody was at the friggin' gym. And it was a blessing in disguise, blessing in, in public because nobody was there in public and I just took it easy. I just went home and then I went to the gym a little later just to stretch and kind of rehab and today I feel extra fresh. I'm going to have a dunk day instead of a hoop day because I don't think anybody, anybody plays on Sundays and I'm just feeling jumpy. Um, but my ele elevated energy is my favorite feeling. I had coffee. I took a shower. I feel amazing. I listened to some music, practiced my dance moves in the mirror. It's fucking amazing already. It's only nine o'clock. A little late for the podcast. Mindset is that... How do you stay motivated? How do you have that energy? It's because the dunking is such a strong desire of mine. I love it so much. The peak, the dunks, the, the thought of just dunking on someone, the thought of dunking in a game, the adrenaline, the feeling I get when I actually land a new dunk, when I make progress is the highest form of energy for me, at least in my physical form in that area. So other things might bring other people that adrenaline rush, like whatever it is, whatever activity you like to do. But for me, it's dunking. And it's because jumping was always something I enjoyed doing ever since I was little and mixed with the videos as well. But my point is, is that I'm so aware of what the goal is that I want to do is that when I think of like what, what to eat, if I want to eat something, make the healthy choice, or if I need to go to the gym, or if I need to push a little harder, I'm, I'm always thinking of what my goal is that it makes it so easy to stay motivated. I don't need, I don't need any extra motivation because it's, it's so clear every moment, every movement that I make is for this bigger goal that that's so deep in me, like a, such a strong passion of mine that it makes it so easy to stay focused. And that's the other thing about mindset is you need to stay focused. And by focused, I mean, think about the long term. Um, that's one thing that I, uh, I struggled with years ago. Um, is that I really wanted to have like a great jump day today, right? So I would do everything I can for this day. And I would like, for example, like say today is Sunday, say like the whole week, I wanted to like rest up, not do anything and have a great jump day. And then for ex forever, for whatever reason, maybe I don't have a great day. I'm like, oh, I'm going to wait to the next good dump, jump day. So I kept trying to like postpone gains just to have one good jump day. Well, this week so far is like, instead of like when I felt fresh and I had energy, I'm like, you know what? I'll do some upper body because long term that'll help me. I'll be stronger or maybe I'll do some stretching. It might tire me out. I might not have the best jumping day, but it's long term. So it's not just saying do more work, but it's always thinking long term. And the other thing about long term is injuries and setbacks. So when you do things, if you have, a, if you had a great day and you want to play again, it's like, what's long term? What's going to make you the long term progress? For example, my knee. 
I had to take like three months off of jumping just to get it healthy. And then another couple months to get it back to jumping a max jumping, you know, but in the grand scheme, you guys probably don't even remember when I did that. That was like from November to March or whatever it was. I barely was jumping. So for me, it's really hard because I show all my progress. I make videos. It's my livelihood. It's how I try to um, make my careers, these videos and my dunk ones do the best. So it's even harder for me, but take that time off if you need it. Because when you look back, if, cause I've done this too, is that I had pains, I had little problems. I'm like, I could push through it. I could push through it. I could push through it. But over time, it was like a year later. I, w- I didn't make any progress because I was, I didn't go backwards a little bit. So sometimes you got to go backwards, think long term. even if you take six months off in the grand scheme is that, um, my fucking hair looks ridiculous. <laughs> um, in the grand scheme of things, Um, if you look back, it's like, okay, if I take six months off, even a year off, right. And then I'm better for it. You got to consider that you got to, you got to think long-term because right now my knees are amazing. My hamstrings are a little tight and now I'm actually struggling with it right now because my hamstrings so tight and my lower back hurts a little bit that I'm like, I think I need to take a solid time, maybe like a month or two months just to rehab that. Even though I'm at my peak right now, I'm at my peak and I'm ready to play. Um, so I'm literally doing it right now and I might take that break, but it, it is really hard and I understand that struggle. But looking back, it's, it's been hurting since the end of June and that's already over a month and a half. So it's like, okay, am I going to struggle with this for another six months? And when I look, it's December and I look back, I'm like, okay, I didn't make any progress. I could have taken three months off, gotten healthy and by, be, by December be even higher than I would have been if I didn't take any breaks. You get what I'm saying? So take that break because I'm in the best shape of my life right now. I'm like the most lean. I know about my body the most. I look the best. My knees are the healthiest. I'm jumping my highest. And that's because I took a big break and I had to take breaks to understand things, but it sucks. But my point is if I never, never took those breaks, I would never have made the progress I made. So you got to think of long term um, and you got to stay focused on your goals. So um, yes, that's that. Okay. So that's huge. That's a huge one is thinking long term, taking the time you need to build a strong foundation. That's my best advice for long term thinking and also mindset. And the other thing I got to say is the visualization. I really like this. I actually have to do it more. Um, I think it's really beneficial to be able to believe in what you're doing. When I got my first dunk, I saw Andy do it from like touching the rim to hanging on the rim to dunking that it made it a hundred percent believable to me. It was just a matter of time. And then when I got my windmill dunk, it was like a bonus. Like I never really thought I couldn't do it. I'm like, okay, if I dunk and I dunk better, I can windmill. It wasn't like if I can do it. And then the two hand dribble dunk off right, left was always so hard for me. And then it was also the one that I wanted the most. I was like, this would make me the most legit dunker. And I was like, and it was almost, it was a mindset thing. It was like, um, I should be able to do this instead of saying I can do this. And the difference between that is saying I should is putting is focusing on the lack that I can't do it. And also it's like, I wanted it so badly and I was so frustrating that I couldn't, I'm like, I should, I should, I should, that it puts so much pressure that it took me like three years to even get a two hand off the dribble right left. And the, the reason I wanted that the one the most, because it was the hardest for me because I made it hard because I practiced bad habits, but then also in game was always my number one goal and everything else was like a bonus. So I mentally, I was laxed about it. I was like, okay, I can do this. This is, this is throwing a lob. I can go get it. I can go hard. But the dribble dunk was like the one I wanted to prove to myself. I'm a legit dunker. So since I wanted it so bad, I put that goal. So put such difficult time mentally to wrap my head that I'm actually a dunker to do that. So after that, I read some books and then three years went by, couldn't do it, visualize it. I'm like, I can do it. I, I switched that thought process. I thought I switched the thing, words I would say to myself, I can do it. I saw myself doing it. I got hype and I landed it. So if you go watch that video, my first 10 foot dunk, two hands off the dribble, right, left. That's why I was crazy hype because in like a month after I shifted that mentality, instead of saying every time I walk in the dim, I should, I said, I can, and I got it. And the other thing about mentality that I like a lot now is that you might've noticed, this is mine too, by the way, this is all my mindset, my mild psychosis. You guys can have your own. But for me, when I walk in the gym and a lot of my dunk friends say this too, is that a lot of days when you go in there, um, for me, this is what I say a lot is that I have more days that I'm expecting to just warm up and have a fun time that go really well, then I have days that I'm like, oh, today's a perfect day and they go perfect. So I have more days that when I go in there, I'm kind of just like, you know what, let's see what happens. And I have no expectations that I do well. And I honestly believe that's, 
there's a lot more to that than just a mentality. It's like you're loose, which makes your muscles work better, which makes every little step of the process go well. Compound effect. It's like you walk in the gym, you're loose. Let's see, you touch the rim. Okay, your footwork was on point. Okay, you warm up properly. Let's see what I do. You're loose. You throw a lob. You're not, you're not putting so much tension on it. If you're like, today's a perfect day. I rested two days in a row. I ate the perfect food. Today's the day I'm going to fucking hit my teeth on the rim. And then you go in and say, oh, that didn't feel too good. You focus on that. Then you're like, oh, this feels a little off. I hope I jump perfect. This, this is what I do. Like, I hope I jump perfect this next jump. Then it goes a little off. Then I start compounding different things. I start tensing up my muscles, jumping a little improper, whatever it is. And everything compounds into bad jumps and tension and too much stress. And then when you have stress, it's less oxygen and your brain doesn't work as well. That's mild psychosis in the wrong way. So use it to your advantage, stay long-term. And that's what a big shift for me is. So now when I go to a session, I got to think long-term because for me, if I'm in a session like today's the day I'm going to make the best YouTube video ever because I'm going to elbow fucking windmill elbow dunk over somebody twice, right? And then if I don't do it, it's so frustrating. But I'm like, you know what? We'll see what happens today. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And then I'm loose and I feel great. And uh, it, I have more fun. So it comes, you have to enjoy it. That's what helps me is in enjoying the sessions. Why are these headphones falling off my head all day long? Um, you have to enjoy it. To me, that makes my sessions a lot better because then I could stay focused on what I need to work on. Because if I don't and I go in there with some goals and I'm not hitting, I, I just hammer those goals and I, and then the next day I'm like, ah, oh, shoot, I should have worked on this. I should have worked on that. But if I just think, you know what, today's just another step. Think long term. What would be a good way to practice today for that long term goal? That's how I want to approach every session. And that's my mindset. And everything else, dude. Find what your dunk life is. That's what, uh, mine is dunking because I love it. It's always been something I loved ever since I was friggin' five years old. I've always loved jumping and I've loved dunking and basketball. Um, and I love so many other things too. But right now, this is such a strong goal of mine. I want to get there and I'm really close. And um, But find what gives you that energy because that's what it's about. That's If you're not motivated to do it, it's okay. Sometimes, sometimes you have goals. I've had in the past that you have goals that you want so badly to prove to yourself, to prove somebody else wrong, but is that really going to satisfy you or is that really going to lead you onto a path of something that you really enjoy doing or is it just like an achievement, you know? So find your dunk. Okay, now everybody's favorite segment. The surprise is coming soon, by the way. The surprise is coming at the very end. Today in history, every day's history, use your mindset to figure out what the hell could I do today. It's not that you're going to make history today, but what crazy shit happens, dude? I can't believe this. Oh my God, this one was long ago. 3,114 BC, the Mesoamerican long court calendar used by several pre-Columbian Mesoamerican civilization, notably the Mayans, begins. Damn, what does that even mean, dude? Okay, today in film, 1937, The Life of Emily Zola, directed by William Dedalier and starring Paul Muni, premier, premieres in New York. Yay! Today in music, 1978, Ses Chic, second studio album by Chick Chic, is released featuring single Le Freak, Billboard. Billboard album of the year. Sick. Okay, sick. Today in sport, 1920 new Babe Ruth, 1920 new, 1929, Babe Ruth becomes first prof- professional baseball player to hit 500 homers. I have too much energy. Damn, 500. Yo, Babe Ruth is on this podcast a lot. Shout out my man, Babe. <laughs> so, and now Dunk Lifer of the Day. What's good? Oh my God. On the Diet Podcast. Just got my first 10 foot dunk, bro, says Justin. That's sick, dude. Justin Ferru. That's amazing. And then I like this one a lot. Beal says, imagine if you speed up Steven in two times the speed. <laughs> dude, I can't even talk, bro. Um, and then Rashad Kohler said, bro, 300 followers away from 30K. We're blowing up. Coach, let's go. Um, is there going to be any more of these motivational podcasts? Says KC Nuezi. Of course, every goddamn day. Let's go. All right. The surprise is I just dropped this morning two week peak program, uh, just a simple program for you, two week long program for you to jump your highest. There's two jump days in there. And by the end of the two weeks, I guarantee you, you will jump higher. And if not, we'll work together to get it happen. It's only 20 bucks. And for the DLD lifers, baby, the dunk life daily lifers, the code for half off is DLD jump day. DLD is capital jump day is lowercase. So DLD capital jump day. 
10 bucks. Get your two weeks. Let's go. I'm super pumped about it because I really think in two weeks, if you just guys want to have some fun, get that prime week. I know a lot of you ask me so many times, how do I set up a week? This is the start. This is the start of it. I'm going to make a full program soon as well. Um, But I want your feedback because I want to know what you like about it, what you don't like about it. And then I want to make a really good program that's probably a month or three months. I don't know. Just getting started. If you know me, you know I like the individual program. So I have that with the Dunk Life memberships. If you want a tailored program to you, that's what I like to do the most. But I also give all my tips here. But if you want some structure and you want some of their, some something to follow, that's what it is. It's on my website, stevenselly.com. And the link is also below. So go get that. That code is only good for today until tonight at midnight. So it's half off for only for the podcast listeners. If you hear the code now, let's go. Enjoy that. So I hope you guys show me what you're doing. I can't wait to see your videos. I already get a lot of videos of people saying that my tips have helped them already. So send me your videos, send me your feedback, help your boy out, support me. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day. Stay tuned for the vlog from today because I think I'm going to go off. Let's go. Oh yeah. Uh, toodaloo. That's young life. Oh, that's the anthem right there. Tried to make an intro, ended up making an anthem. Oh.